Hi, I'm Peter Othier. I'm presenting the uh, International Continent Society teaching module uh, Pressure Flow Analysis, uh, which is analysis of voiding. Um, a teaching module, ICS teaching module, um, is, um, is uh, produced together with a manuscript which is uh, published in, in uh, Neurology and Neurodynamics, and this manuscript uh, provides you the evidence base of, uh, of the teaching module of the uh, knowledge which is contained in this uh, presentation. Uh, the reference to the teaching module is the Neurology and Neurodynamics of 2016. Uh, you can find the evidence background on, uh, on this. This uh, teaching module is uh, 25 slides uh, and should be used in the complete form. Normal lower urinary tract function uh, begins with bladder filling. The kidneys produce urine and urine fills the bladder and the bladder stretches because of the filling. And the nervous system maintains the relaxed detrusor, maintains relaxation of the detrusor. And the nervous system ensures a low intravesical pressure because the uh, detrusor muscle accommodates to the filling uh, that the kidneys do. Uh, this tension activates, however, muscle stretch receptors and that uh, gives awareness, perception of fullness uh, in a, on a gradual scale. It's proprioceptus, which is uh, neurologically uh, identical to uh, the sensation of, uh, of all the muscles in, in, in the human body. Uh, at the given moment, there is a cortical determination of a desire to void. The bladder is full enough and um, uh, there is a need to void. At that moment, voiding can take place and uh, until the bladder is emptied. And then the bladder starts to fill again. Voiding can, be, uh, can take place when it's socially acceptable. And by will, the pelvic floor relax relaxes and autonomically the uh, urethral sphincter relaxes and the antagonistic detrusor dome contracts. That is, that the urethral sphincter uh, cannot elongate by itself, it has uh, to be uh, antagonistic, has, it needs the antagonistic energy of the detrusor dome. The detrusor pressure forces the outlet to open, forces the bladder neck to open and the urethra and the pelvic floor to open and urine is pushed out by the detrusor pressure and urine flow begins until the detrusor contraction ends and then sphincter and pelvic floor contraction resumes and uh, the bladder fills again. Control of lower urinary tract function is by central nervous system and is under the influence of uh, social and emotional effects and also uh, cognition helps us to avoid on a socially accepted uh, moment. We can learn uh, when to avoid and where to avoid and that influences uh, urodynamics of, uh, of micturition. It's an unusual situation, so that can have an influence on, on your dynamics. And I will come back to that. Central and peripheral nerve pathways are needed, uh, intact sensory and intact motoric uh, uh, nerve pathways are needed to control lower urinary tract function initiated by the central nervous systems. The general practice, uh, principles of urodynamic tests are also uh, uh, accounting for the, uh, for the systometry. Uh, should be that uh, the patient is well informed of what's going to happen. The, uh, 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 there should be an appropriate environment and uh, the procedure should be antiseptic. Voiding pressure flow tests. Uh, may be influenced to the patient's emotion and that should play a role in good urodynamic practice. Also, after the test, after the patient has void, voided, it should be asked, was this almost as usual? And was the bladder as full as usual? Or was it too full? And of course, by good urodynamic practice, uh, the systematry was done uh, 
when with recording of filling sensation, gradual filling sensation, first sensation of filling, uh, normal desire to void, strong desire to void, and you have indicated permission to void. The permission to void separates the storage and the filling phase of uh, and the voiding phase of uh, of the low urinary tract function. And when the voiding has taken place, it's good urodynamic practice to compare that with any of the available free flows uh, done by these patients. Again, there are some negative influences on voiding. Uncomfortably large interphysical volume at the start of the voiding um, will not lead to a representative voiding and a very unrepresentative urgency. Too much urgency will uh, also lead to an unrepresentative voiding. On the other side, an extreme inhibition of overactive detrusive contractions before the start of voiding will lead to unrepresentativity. And uh, the rectal catheter itself, by being there, may uh, prevent or hinder uh, pelvic floor muscle re relaxation. If a pressure flow test is done, we should be aware that the catheter itself may cause some passive e uh, effect. It, the catheter may be ex uh, obstructive and also may stent a kinking urethra, giving unreliable or unrepresentative uh, voiding results. The, cause, the catheter may also cause active effect and it might hinder normal uh, behavior. It alters voiding sensation and it may uh, cause a fear of pain which hinders normal voiding and normal relaxation. Of course the catheter may slip out and give a technical artifact. If you set up the test there will be good geodynamic practice uh, equal to the uh, ICS model systometry and surely you have uh, balanced intravesical and abdominal interrectal pressure and cuff pressures before and after the voiding are relevant to, to demonstrate that the pressures are reliable and symmetrical in the intravesical and abdominal lines. Uh, correction of the flow curve for the systematic delay of flow and pressure um, should be um, uh, settled in the machine and the uh, Meatus to flow meter distance is relevant in this. Uh, pressure should be synchronized with the flow, since it takes some time for the patient, for the urine to leave the, the patient and enter the flow meter. The most comfortable patient position uh, should be selected for the pressure flow uh, test which is usually standing for the men and seated for most of the for all of the women in fact uh, a flow meter as close to uh, as possible to the meatus is uh, relevant uh, it minimizes the delay between the flow and uh, the meatus and uh, uh, the flow at the meatus and, and entering the flow meter and um, it it uh, uh, causes uh, uh, no hinder because of the uh, uh, trying to aim uh, into the flow meter. Uh, there should nothing be nothing in between the meatus and the funnel of beaker of uh, of the flow meter. We use the standard is a trans thin tiny standard uh, transurethral uh, catheter, which is usually seven or eight French or six, and we use it thin rectal catheter uh, for abdominal pressure uh, measurement. That is the ICS uh, good urodynamic practice standard. Tapes for, uh, uh, to fix the catheters uh, should be close, as close as possible to the meatus uh, uh, of, the, of the urethra as well as to the anus. Uh, the mechanics of voiding. The trussel pressure generates the flow, I said in the beginning, and the trussel pressure is defined by uh, interphysical pressure minus abdominal pressure. The detrusor is the energy for the, uh, for the bladder to, uh, to generate the flow and the urethra functions as a tube. And this tube is distensible. It can be distended until a certain maximum. And the Qmax maximum flow is a sign of maximum distension. And after Qmax both 
uh, urethra and uh, uh, detrusor are in their balance and uh, after Qmax when the flow stops the urethra has uh, collapsed passive, uh, passively because of the uh, pressures outside the urethra. So Flowmax, Qmax is uh, limited by the flow controlling zone and by definition the flow controlling zone is a virtual point in the urethra that gives the highest resistance to flow. And increased resistance drives the detrusor to a higher pressures to general flow, generate flow. And the definition of outflow obstruction is high pressure, low flow. The urethral catheter itself and its eight French is, uh, causes a resistance, a systematic resistance of about 10 centimeters of water and uh, that is um, uh, standard in all urodynamics that we do with transurethral catheters. However, when you, should, when you use a suprapubic catheter for urodynamics, uh, that should be corrected to calibrate for the standard uh, pressure values that we use. Mechanics of folding phases is basically four phases. Uh, the start of pressure flow is the start of, of uh, permission uh, of beginning to void after permission to void. In a normal situation, the detrusor pressure starts to rise, uh, much or little, but it starts to rise. The detrusor pressure rises, and the outlet is relaxed and becomes distended because of the, the rise of the detrusor pressure. The pressure pushes away the outlet. So here's passive distension of the outlet between 1 and 2 on the graph that you see on the right hand side. The detrusor opening pressure is by definition the moment that the flow starts to begin. At a given moment there is maximum flow rate, then the, the, the outlet is pushed open to its maximum and then uh, it is together with a, a, a certain pressure in the, in the bladder and that is limited by the flow controlling zone. From that moment until the flow stops, there is a balance between outlet and um, detrusor pressure uh, which uh, causes the flow to continue uh, until the urethra collapses, the outlet collapses, and that is the uh, closing pressure, which is the end of flow. So, more clinically, start of voiding is the detrusor pressure rise, uh, distension of outlet uh, until, is the opening until opening pressure is the start of flow, maximum flow beginning of, is the beginning of the steady state uh, of the outlet and then uh, the collapse of the outlet which is uh, seen as uh, in, in the in, uh, which, which gives the detrusor closure pressure. During a normal voiding again there is a balance between 3 and 4 and this balance is used to uh, grade bladder outlet obstruction. In ICS terms, there are a few terms, the few definitions, which is pre-micturition pressure, it is opening the trusor pressure, uh, the trusor pressure and the trusor pressure at maximum flow, uh, closing the trusor pressure and uh, flow delay time uh, should be corrected for in, in the machine. The, max, the, the most important is the maximum flow at, uh, at the trusor pressure and the trusor pressure at maximum flow which are used to um, uh, grade obstruction. Uh, agreed upon is a provisional ICS method for the definition of obstruction, which is an easy way to grade bladder, bladder outlet, outflow obstruction, which is P that at Qmax minus 2 times Qmax. It's a simple formula that says um, whether there's outlet outflow obstruction or not, and it is commonly referred to as the bladder outflow obstruction index. This provisional ICS method for the definition of obstruction is more or less clinically calibrated for healthy men with a large prostate. If the uh, ca calculation ends up with a value below 20, there's no bladder outlet obstruction. And if it's above 40, uh, there is bladder outlet obstruction. And if it's between, then it's uh, intermediate bladder outlet obstruction or equivocal. 
So that might clinically be interpreted uh, in patients, in male patients with a large prostate as that when there's no bladder outlet obstruction, that obstruction will not change the voiding by itself very much. And when there is bladder outlet obstruction, that obstruction will be effective. Um, in the equivocal zone, there's a 50-50 chance of symptomatic or objective uh, improvement of uh, bladder outlet obstruction or voiding. However, this is only uh, one element of urodynamic testing and it does not take other fill or filling phase abnormalities into account and that may be relevant for the patient's symptoms as well. Quality control should be an uh, integral part of good urodynamic practice. Was the patient adequately informed and has anything been changed or was anything changed uh, according to the report of the patient between the indication for the testing and the testing itself? During the testing, uh, a lot of elements are relevant as good urodynamic practice quality and they are listed on the slide. And after this, a good urodynamic practice is to instruct the patient to drink extra. This will not prevent urinary tract infection, but it will prevent uh, urinary tract bacteriuria to uh, uh, continue into a urinary tract infection. Another element of uh, our quality control, more specific for uh, pressure flow analysis, is mentioned already. Was this voiding more or less as usual? Was it more or less as at home? And if not, then basically urodynamics or diagnosis might not be very relevant. If the patient has not been able to void in a representative way, it is um, not easy to, uh, to uh, uh, make, the, uh, make a good diagnosis for this. So, a technical element of quality, quality control is to see whether your pressure flow graphs uh, are in values that you can expect. Are they in the physiological range and are they reacting on the cuff, uh, cuffs and moving uh, as you expect them to do? The other thing is that the question is, is uh, is permission to void adequately marked to demarcate the difference between storage and voiding phase. Again, quality control, if the traces are there, um, is the lag time uh, corrected, are flow rate, correct, uh, flow rate artifacts corrected and are pressure artifacts corrected. When you, uh, for instance, use uh, pressure at maximum flow, it should be uh, a corrected maximum flow. Um, if uh, there is possible for it residual, it should be measured and then uh, uh, it should be able to, uh, to make an adequate diagnosis. If not, uh, repeat the test and it's a good urodynamic practice to do a quality control analysis of the of the urodynamic measurement of the systometry and the pressure flow analysis before uh, taking out the catheters and uh, sending your patient away so a pressure flow analysis plot can be made and is available on much of the machines. However, uh, that will be discussed in, in the advanced analysis uh, module. So, clinical quality. Some patients are unable to void because of the situation. And that might not be unexpected. Some patients tell you, I'm a shy voider. I cannot void other, at other places than at home. So the situation becomes even more difficult in a hospital, in a, in a laboratory situation. So uh, it, we should do our best to allow them to void as good as possible, but if they do not manage, sometimes there's no contraction, sometimes there's a, a only straining and no contraction, no voiding is observed. This is because of the situation, which is not a medical diagnosis in itself, not a lower urinary tract function diagnosis, but it's the emotion. Some of those patients, they tend to start straining and do not produce anything. And this is not representative. And basically, it's impossible 
to uh, label this pressure flow, which is an un unrepresentative falling, uh, to uh, uh, a clinical diagnosis or urological uh, or, or urogynecological diagnosis. Pressure flow analysis has a certain clinical uh, relevance that is most of most relevant in elderly men with a larger prostate. Then there's straightforward analysis of pressure and flow and uh, the bladder outlet of, uh, index is available and it's clinically apl applicable for grading of outlet proportions, uh, properties. Uh, however, for young men and women and children, also the basic principles are uh, straightforward, however, they are not uh, universally uh, agreed clinical grading of outlet properties. Uh, dynamic outlet obstruction uh, is existing and uh, there's no um, standard grading of dynamics of outlet obstruction or outlet dynamics uh, available and uh, no pressure flow criteria for uh, dynamics to quantify or qualify a dynamic obstruction are available and also not uh, for um, uh, neurogenic dyssynergia or uh, neurogenic dynamic outlet obstruction. Concluding uh, pressure flow, flow relates to pressure and is determined by outlet obstruction, outlet properties. And a representative voiding and clinically represent relevant pressure flow analysis uh, depends on good neurodynamic practice and properly assigned patient cooperation. A very unrepresentative voiding or significant underactive detrusive contraction limits the value of pressure flow analysis and uh, pressure flow analysis and pressure flow starts by definition after permission to voids, which is the demarcation between the filling phase and the storage phase of the bladder. Bladder outlet obstruction can be graded by the provisional ICS method, which is two times uh, Qmax uh, subtracted from pre-data Qmax. Thank you.